All right, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm going to go over how you need to do the Elements of Art overview pop-up in your composition notebook. It will have an assigned page. I believe that the notes were posted on page 14. As such, the interactive piece should be installed on page 15 in your composition, in your composition notebook. So I'm just going to kind of turn to a random page really quick, and we're going to install it over here. So I'm going to put this aside really fast. Let's talk about the piece itself. This is the sheet of paper that you get, and these are the tabs. These little tabs ultimately are going to go in each of these little sections labeled element of art here. You're going to put down the definition first. They are mix and matched. So line is not the area around, inside, or between shapes and forms. So you will have to match them up. So what you're going to do, and there's no assigned spot, you are going to put the definitions down first. I apologize, I meant to leave a small little tab area to signify glue tab, because you're going to need to glue the tab down and then have the window so that it opens up. So you can flip open line, and I will show you guys that finish in a minute. This piece is actually what you have to install. So we have this ginormous castle that you will have to cut out. The skill that you are using, obviously, that should increase your scissor skills. The intention is that you should have absolutely no white space around the outside edges. You should also still have a black outline. So you need to cut through this line. That's why it is so heavy and dark. You're going to cut these pieces out separately. These are mechanical pieces. They are what makes the pop-up work. Okay. This is a type of box fold. It is modified slightly. And then we have the one installed piece that will be in motion. Okay, The movement in a pop-up, in any pop-up, is derived when you open the page. That is the mechanical force required is opening the booklet. So this will be the part that creates that mechanical motion. This will be the part that gets to move. These will be the part that shows you actually paid attention and have good notes. Your goal for this, and this needs to happen before you cut this out, before you even start cutting, you need to completely decorate this castle, making sure that you are showing me parts of all of the elements that we talked about. So for line, I would say maybe you color specific types of lines in the roof in order to create texture. Or we color certain colors in different ways in order to show color. Or in order to show form, maybe we'll make these columns look three-dimensional by adding a shadow on one side. So my expectation is you are going to color this in, trying to use all of the elements of art. Okay, then we'll do this piece. Now, I'm not going to show you cutting this out because, honestly, it's going to take freaking forever, and I don't have that type of patience, and neither do you. So I've already cut the pieces. Wonk, right here. So we have our ca castle cut out. I did it kind of quick in about five minutes this morning, so it's like I still have little tendrils that I need to nip off. Like that, whatever. So I have it cut out. And then I have the mechanical pieces. Now you'll notice I have dotted lines and there are solid lines. There's, this is actually two different pieces. Okay, so this is two parts. And what I need to do first is I need to cut it in half. Once again, your goal is to stay as evenly in these lines as humanly possible. And then they need to be folded along the dotted. When we're doing these pop-ups, remember how I told you guys that precision is going to be key? When we're doing these pop-ups, you have to be as precise as possible. So you're going to fold these, and you're going to fold them carefully to make sure that those dots end up on your crease. And you're going to fold it. You see how it's like right smack dab on it? And you're going to fold it both ways. Use your fingernails to crease it. Okay? Don't bend it too, too far because you will pop it off. And I'm going to do that for all three of these folds on both of these pieces. You want it to be even, by the way. So all of these folds have got to be as parallel as possible or the, me the mechanism is going to be flawed. So we're folding all three of these as neatly as possible, trying to line them up. You'll notice I even was nice enough to give you a glue label. It's like I told you everything, mostly everything. Okay. So we're going to fold all three. Again, make sure that your dots line up. So don't rush the fold. If the fold isn't perfectly like this one, you can see just barely that didn't go straight. So I'm going to manipulate it a little bit and fix it so that it's even straighter. Folding it both ways. I'm going to do the same thing here. Make sure that all of my dots line up and that my tab is straight and even. 
and here on the last glue tab. Notice that I, again, I am not trying to rush them. I'm lining them up and very carefully adjusting. It'll take you a little bit longer than it takes me. Okay, so I'm going to move the castle out of the way for right now. We're going to assume that your castle is completely decorated before you get to this point, please. I'm going to set him aside. I'm going to come over here and open this guy up. Just move this side too. Bye bye. I don't need you right now. And now we're going to use our friend, the blue here. And the first piece is kind of arbitrary, and yet not. So if you look really closely, this is ridiculously precise. I lined this up in here like crazy person because crazy person. Okay, so your glue tabs are going to need to align with the towers. I have a lot of playroom in here. So don't panic too much if you're off. Oh gosh, I'm off. It's terrible. Yeah, it's, it's not that big of a deal. It's okay. But it needs to align to the towers. Now, I'm going to start with one. And what I'm going to do when I glue this is I'm going to glue and I'm going to fold these under so that I make almost a box. If the glue tabs were longer, it would close off into a box. That's why this is called a box fold is because it's a freaking box. And what these are going to do, I'm going to aim for the margin lines. You can barely see this one, but in your own papers, you'll be able to see this margin line and this one. Because these measurements are pretty darn close. Additionally, that whole OCD thing, not even joking. I freaking measured it. Your average margin will should fat fit with this mark. So we're going to use those margins as guides, and we're going to glue it so that the dotted line, glue tab goes under, but that the dotted line matches up with the pink line of your margin, like so. Okay? And we're going to glue both of those pieces roughly where they are. If you get to the point you're not sure it's going to stay, like, I know I need a glue tab here, and I know I need a glue tab there. Don't do the creepy voice. I do it because I'm weird. Just go with it. All right, so mark so that you at least know where they're supposed to be so if they get knocked around, you don't have to go back and forth 50,000 times. Now, this is where the gluing part gets important. I'm going to put, that's way too much. What the front door? Okay, so I already know this is too much, and I already know I made a mistake. Okay, I'm going to use my finger, and you're going to do this whether you use too much or not. You're going to smear that glue to cover the entire tab. And then you're going to wipe it so that it's just barely tacky. I'm going to do it to both sides. Smaller dot, please. Thank you. A little bit more. I'm going to do it to both sides, and I'm going to smear that down with my finger until they're both tacky. And I'm not talking like tacky you go to home goods and buy crappy materials. I'm talking tacky like sticky. And I'm going to glue both of these bad boys, again, lining them up to that margin. And I'm going to push them. I'm going to put my finger underneath of it and push them in. You're going to want to hold this in space for a little bit. If you do not hold it down, it will come up, and the whole piece is just going to become garbage. All right? Usually, you want to give it about 10 to 15 seconds. If you want to use a pencil. Oh, my gosh, look, that works. It's so amazing. It's so clever. Tool users. Who have thought humans were tool users? This one's coming up, so I'm going to have to actually do this this way. Aim for about 30 seconds. Let's do a little bit longer to make sure that it has a chance to actually dry enough to stick. Um, this will probably stay wet the entire time for this video because I used that much glue accidentally. Please don't put too much glue. If you put too much glue, it's going to make the underlay paper too wet. It's going to make your cardstock too moist. All right. So quick review again. Tiny little dot. Boink. Rub it in. Make sure it covers the entire glue tab. Do the same thing on the other side. Tiny little dot, rub it in, remove excess glue. Make sure you're covering every little corner. Okay, glue tab folds down. Dotted line should line up with your margin. Glue tab folds down. Dotted line should line up with your margin. And then just apply pressure. It's okay if it flattens out a little bit right here. You can already see as I'm moving the paper, you see how this motion is happening right here? That is why this works, okay? All of the fold is what makes that work. And I just realized that I didn't put anything to mark what page that is. So let me find where I just put that because that was stupid. Yeah, I like that. That worked. Okay? But, yeah, it folds completely flat. And now my OCDness is telling me that I screwed up and that the castle is going to be just a little bit outside of your book. 
by about a quarter of an inch because I tried too hard. But that's fine. It's okay if it comes out a little bit. So what's going to happen here is we're not going to apply any glue to the back of this castle. You're not. When you are doing pop-up books, you always put the glue on whatever is smallest. So the smallest area. So I'm going to put the glue here. You can choose to have this guy open up this way or open up this way. I don't actually care because it will close just fine either way. Um, it's up to you how you want to drive it. I'm going to drive it this way. Your notes should not be covered. If you stuck them in your book the proper way, they should not be covered. If they are, you may have to move some information. Okay? So I'm going to apply glue to this, to this portion right here. And just like before, I'm going to put slightly larger dots because I have slightly larger areas. I'm going to use my finger to rub that in and make sure I do not have any excess glue. Make sure it's coated evenly. Do the same thing down here. Make sure that it's coated evenly and then there's no excess glue. So it's just barely sticky. And then I'm going to apply the castle to that. Pay attention to your left and your, your well, in this case it would be your top and bottom. Pay attention to where that aligns. Because you want it to be all the way down in the book, but you don't want it to come off the bottom. So move like that. And then I'm just going to shut the page. There's really no purpose to me doing anything else. Yeah, see, I'm, that's actually more than a quarter of an inch. I'm just going to close that page, and I'm going to apply pressure. Because I removed excess glue, I don't have to worry about it leaking out. Okay? Because I rubbed that in there, I don't have to worry about that stuff coming out and attaching to the other page like some of you guys have glued pages shut before. You know who you are. I've watched you. Okay? So now that should, I'm going to give it a little bit longer. That should be dry enough here in just a second that I can open this up. And the castle will open so that you end up with this full mechanic here. Oh, no, that page shut. Why is that folded? So the castle will open up. Okay? So it's a fully mechanical piece. That will both open and close. This is the basic of the basic. You can attach whatever you want to a box fold like this, and we will be doing several box folds because they are simple. Tomorrow's fold will be a V fold because reasons. But that's that. Make sure, again, that your castle is completely decorated. As you can see, there's no chance in gobbledygook that you're going to be coloring this once that book is done because it's standing up. Okay? Okay. Now, as far as the attachments are concerned, which I should have done a minute ago, and I didn't because reasons, the biggest reason being I haven't slept and I haven't thought either. I really want that to kind of sit and do. I'm going to hang that out over here. I'm only going to do one of them really quick so that you understand the point. I'm going to do... When you're cutting, I'm going to cut the whole tab out. When you're cutting the title piece, I apologize. I have to reformat this page. I printed it before I realized I screwed it up. So when you're cutting this title piece, you are going to leave, you're going to leave a tab past that line. Okay? You're going to leave a tab past that line. So like this, I'm going to leave this margin area because I'm going to need it because that's the only place that I'm going to be putting glue on that tab. So I have this piece out. I'm going to cut line. These lines are much thinner, so please be cautious when you're cutting. And then I'm going to cut the definitions out because these are not matched. You have to match them. I highly recommend because you guys are going to be working with so much scrap paper that you actually pay very close attention. Only cut like one at a time out. Do I have anyone in here who can tell me what line is? What you got? Nailed it. See? So you guys should be able to match these freaking definitions up. They're in your notes verbatim. Okay? So line is way down yonder. I'm just going to cut that one piece out. I hear y'all cutting, and I have this sinking suspicion that you haven't colored your castles yet. Pretty sure that that was your first step. All right? So we're going to actually start with our definition, the path of a point moving through space. Just like before, because we don't want to use an excess of glue, I'm going to put dots 
in the corners, like one in the middle, and I'm going to smear this out. Taking it off of my paper because if I smear this out on top of my composition notebook, I'll get, composition, I'll get glue on my composition notebook and then I'll seal it shut and not wonder why. Okay, make sure it's right side up because half of y'all are going to glue it upside down, at least one. And you're going to sneak it into that little window. Okay, make sure that's down there good. Now, I don't need this much flag. In fact, if I actually line that up, it's going to go off the castle. You see how it's coming off just a little bit? I don't like that so much. So I'm just going to nick it in half. I'm going to fold it. I'm going to pre-fold it. Again, it's a smaller, I can't even show you. It's a smaller line, so take your time. You want the line to end up in the fold. You don't want it to be all kind of wonky. Um, I'm going to apply the glue just to that spot. Just like every other time, I'm going to smear that out so there's not hardly any glue on that tab. And then right side up, I'm going to line that up and attach it to my castle. And the idea is that, yay, it opens. Yay, it opens. Yay, it opens. I wanted to do a pull tab with this. And I'm like, y'all are not ready for a pull tab. That's too complex. Okay? And that is literally how this works. It took me 16 minutes to get here because I talked too much. You will have additional studio time to work on this, so don't panic today. Get started.